killers in beautiful alien form with exquisite traps ready to ensnare unsuspecting insects. These meat eaters are mostly small. But on remote mountains in Southeast Asia, giants are growing, and they're desperate for much larger prey, like warm-blooded mammals. So why on earth would a bat voluntarily lie down to rest in a carnivorous plant? Where did they come from? Why are they here? The rise of the carnivorous plants began between 60 and 125 million years ago. In the age of the dinosaurs, this murderous form of flowering plant began to evolve in places where the soil was poor or non-existent. Across this ancient world, desperately hungry plants that were unable to get nutrients from the soil converged independently on the same solution. Eat meat. They didn't have to look far for their prey. Insects, their constant companions, gave them all they needed. But transforming into a meat eater with no means of stalking prey requires mechanisms to lure, trap, and digest food. Carnivorous plants worked with what nature gave all flowering plants, nectar and leaves. Pitcher plant. The yellow pitcher plant is another meat-hungry plant native to the New World, found mostly in the southeastern United States, running from Alabama to Georgia, and also through Florida, Virginia, and the Carolinas. Aptly named yellow pitcher plant. The yellow pitcher plant traps insects using a kind of rolled-up leaf, which has a spectacular bright yellow color, and these can grow to a huge three feet in height, although most examples are somewhere around 20 inches tall. The pitcher has a kind of lid to stop rainwater diluting the digestive fluid contained within. Hairs on the plant point down toward the pitcher part, directing any curious insect to its inevitable doom. The fly is drawn on by the scent of a nectar produced by the plant, but this nectar is no ordinary nectar. It contains a toxin, which is also present in hemlock, and serves to incapacitate the insect, making its eventual fall into the digestive pitcher pit even more inevitable. This plant is easy to keep and cultivate, and is therefore one of the most popular carnivorous plants in greenhouses across the world. Just don't fall in these, sometimes known as monkey cups, due to monkeys' habit of drinking from them, are tropical pitcher plants. The genus contains around 170 species, and they are distributed widely through parts of Asia, Australia, and Africa. Actually grows into one of these monkey cups. But the most diversity of the largest and strangest looking of these pitcher plants are found in the remaining rainforests of Borneo, Sumatra, and the Philippines. The plants have a climbing stem, which can grow to up to 50 feet in length, and at the end is a pitcher, often brightly colored and resembling a large champagne flute. The pitchers are usually brightly colored, which aids in attracting insects, and the the usual method is applied of a greasy slide down into the digestive fluid at the bottom of the pitcher, and in some species, such as the Raja of Borneo, the pitcher is huge, measuring 16 inches long by 8 inches wide across the opening, and they can hold as much as 6 pints of water, or 4 pints of digestive fluid. This makes Nepenthes Raja the only plant species known to regularly trap mammals for food, with rat remains having been found in them, as well as remains of lizards, frogs, and birds. This rare plant has long been sought after by collectors, although efforts are now being made to try and protect its natural habitat from the human cobra destruction. lily is one of the most unusual looking plants in nature. It is native to North California and Oregon, and is a very rare plant with cool running water. If you are lucky enough to find one of these pitcher plants, you may witness its incredible feeding habits. The tubular leaves stand up and widen like the head of a rearing cobra, giving it a spectacular, if uncanny and alien-like appearance. Furthermore, the leaves are partially translucent, which helps to confuse any unfortunate creatures who wander into the plant, leading them on to their doom. Living in poor soil means the plants must supplement the nitrogen content in their diet with carnivory. Unlike other pitcher plants, which collect rainwater, the cobra lily has a form of plump, which draws water up from the roots, and it is able to regulate the levels within, 
something unique in the plant world. This system, although complex, is much more efficient than other pitcher plants, and the cobra lily is usually filled with the remains of its There's victim. perhaps no other carnivorous plant as famous as the Venus flytrap, the startling leaf mechanism resembling a kind of spiked alien mouth in green and red give it a creepiness and extraordinariness. that few other meat-eating plants can match. Instead of letting the flies or spiders simply drop into a tank of fluid or get stuck on a resin trap, these have jaws that clamp shut on prey. And the way they work is surprisingly complex. Once a fly lands to start drinking up that sweet, sweet sap on the inside of the jaws, it will almost certainly trigger one of the tiny spines, which are on the surface of the leaf. This sets a timer running. And if the fly hits another one in 20 seconds, the trap will close. This is to reduce closures on useless items and make sure it's a moving fly. Also, half trapping a fly is fatal to both fly and plant, as the bacterial decomposition of the fly will seep into the exterior of the plant, while within, a special antiseptic is produced to make sure this does not affect the plant as it breaks down and digests its prey. To avoid this, the digestive enzymes are only released once the fly has hit six or more triggers, following the closure of the trap. So the Venus flytrap can be sure it's caught a nutritious live insect, and not just a piece of leaf or bark. The plants are found in a tiny area around Wilmington, N.C., and an estimated 5 million of the plants in 1979 now stands at just 160,000 in the wild. A massive 93% destruction rate thought the 40. Venus flytrap was amazing. Then the waterwheel plant is here to up the stakes. Whatever the Venus flytrap can do, this fascinating and endangered plant genus can do underwater. It is an aquatic plant which uses snapping traps, similar to the Venus flytrap, to catch water insects tadpoles, and small fish. Once the genus included many species, but only one survives, and that species is a highly unusual global clone. With distributions across 40 countries, with little differentiation in the species, in spite of huge gaps in the areas they live in, as diverse as Russia's Arctic region to Australia to Africa, it is an extremely efficient trapper. And the jaws close in just 100 milliseconds, which is among the fastest moving in the plant kingdom. Curiously, almost two-thirds of the surviving plants on Earth thrive in Chernobyl's nuclear exclusion zone, only adding to the badass nature of this plant. However, as humans have systematically destroyed wetland areas across the globe, this sensitive and complex plant has become endangered, with population reductions rivaling the devastating losses experienced by its land-dwelling distant relative, the Venus flytrap. Can we save this amazing plant from extinction? No crazy thing from nature can be complete without an Australian entry that finds a way to be even more terrifying and awesome than the already terrifying and awesome plants on this list. The Australian sundew has the most ruthless killing mechanism in the plant world, using a catapult system to throw a fly to its doom. In a cultivar arrangement, the sundew has an array of snap tentacles which, when triggered by a fly, launch the creature into a set of glue tentacles, which then begin slowly moving the dying fly down into the mouth of the plant for digestion. Special high-speed cameras allowed researchers to capture the moment, and the catapults fire at an incredible speed, sensing and then catapulting the insect into the sticky zone in just 400 milliseconds. How this works without muscles or a nervous system remains a mystery, but this plant's mucilage has incredible elastic properties which are being used in nanotechnology research. This is one incredible plant that is not only every fly's worst nightmare, but may be helping shape yes, our very known as the green pitcher plant is native to the new world. Like all pitcher plants, it is one of the most striking carnivorous plants with large tapered tubes, which grow up to three feet in height, ranging in color from green to red. It is highly endangered. In fact, it is the most endangered of all pitcher plants, including some real monsters. Due to overcollection, its native habitat 
once included Tennessee, but it is now extinct there. It continues to grow in Alabama, Georgia, and North Carolina. Like other pitcher plants, the insects are attracted to the sweet smell, but soon find themselves sliding down toward the pool of digestive fluid, guided on by hairs, which point the way and make it impossible to turn back. Once widespread through bogs, it now only grows in small numbers, in 34 locations. Three cultivars were created through selective crossbreeding, although one of these was lost in a greenhouse catastrophe and is now unfortunately plant from Australia out of the list. After all, it's a very wild country where a lot of exotic species live, both animal and plant. So it makes sense that at least one of the plants on this list comes from there. And that would be the moccasin plant, which was first found in the southwestern part of this huge country. Once again, like most carnivorous plants, the moccasin plant releases a sweet smell that brings insects close to its pitchers, which, by the way, are shaped like moccasins, and in those pitchers that the insects get eaten and digested. It's actually a very torturous event, as the pitchers have translucency, which makes the bugs confused and knock themselves while trying to go through what they think is a way out of their suffering. Something odd about this plant is that it has features that make it more related to flowering plants rather than the carnivorous ones. But then again, some things in science can't be explained, and we have no choice other than enjoy and admire the twisted way in which everything functions around us. Normal plants use nectar to attract pollinators. Carnivorous plants use it to lure insects to their death. Some even disguise themselves as flowers. Others don't bother to hide their true nature with striking appendages smothered in nectar. Insects looking for sweet rewards will find themselves on a slippery slide to oblivion. Normal plants have leaves to effectively harness sunlight for photosynthesis, but carnivorous plants have transformed them into ingenious traps with fail-safe control mechanisms. But what to do with all that meat? Carnivorous plants secrete digestive juices just like we humans do. Enzymes and acids break down their prey. But all these clever adaptations come at a cost. To lure, trap, and consume their prey, carnivorous plants need to use a lot of energy. And there's another problem. Their modified leaves are no longer the right shape to extract enough energy from sunlight. 